Alright everybody, welcome back to the video. Today is our normal Sunday uploads and as promised I'm bringing to you guys the more competitive and also more expensive Synchron build and from what you can see on screen we're running a lot of the Bustiels, the Kashtiras, we even got Telem and Sharon in the build so there's quite a lot of good generic cards that you're seeing in a lot of other decks and I'm pretty sure you've seen this kind of um, deck profile on a lot of other channels so there is a little bit of similarities here and there and yeah like I said it is quite expensive but we do need this to kind of keep up with the meta which is 10 light years ahead of Synchron at the moment so this still gives us that competitive edge where we still have a good chance of winning but yeah so as you can see like I said we've got Bistils, Kashtiras, Tealum and Sharon what I will say though is I think Mr. 037 put this in good words on his channel where our Synchron deck relies quite heavily on the fact that we need our low level monsters so for example if we look at the extra deck we've got like Shaman, Metal Marcher, Herald of, oh not even Herald but Cupid Pitch and stuff like that which is our small monsters and we need to sequence our way up into the higher level monsters and our boss monsters if you will in stuff like Cheng Ying, Baron, Omega, Crystal Wing and stuff like that right and the more competitive builds, oh not competitive but the more meta builds don't really need that because I mean their normal summons and monsters are boss monsters in themselves. Look at Kashtira for example. The stuff they bring out which are free special summons and most are boss monsters themselves and they're pretty powerful. Then they don't even go into extra deck yet and their stuff is completely broken. And let's not even get into tier because that's just another board game on its own. And the Bistils, like they game changes for a lot of decks. So Synchron has a very hard time keeping up and we do need this. Um, so what I will say is the Bistils for this build, you don't really need to be running all of them because we're not going to rely on the Branded Beast and therefore we don't really need Lubellion, which is quite expensive in and of itself. We just need these actors basically DD Crows and they search, so Magnemite would search the Drizvum or we could search our Stardust Trail because it's a dragon. So there is a little bit of synergy here, you could also add Distrudo and then make a level 7 Synchro that way. So there is some synergy with Magnemite which is good and I did make a combo on this in one of my previous videos which I'll put in the cards at the top in the description down below. Um, but yeah, those are the Bishels, I think they don't need an explanation. Magnemite is fairly expensive but it's not as bad as some of the stuff we have so for those who can afford it, definitely use these. Um, Unicorn, I think for the Kashtiris this has to be in your deck. Out of everything here, Unicorn is something you do capitalize on. Because simply special summoning Unicorn, Synchro Overtake into a Baron and then go Birth, Revive the Unicorn. That is pretty powerful in itself without even making Speeder. So I mean this is pretty strong, right? Because our whole deck revolves around Speeder setting up our whole plays and now we don't even need it. So you see how it's so cool. Um, but yeah, so the thing, the one thing I'll say is Fenrir is a little unnecessary in my opinion. Um, because all it does it is, in, if there's interruption, you can banish your card, your opponent controls. If it's a, a card, one face up card. So, while it is cool, it's like what, $74 for one? That's almost the price of a Baron. And you need three. So if you can't afford it, go for the Fenrir. But for, in my opinion, I still think Ogre, in my, I've been, I've been testing this. Ogre does a little bit more for me. Because if the interrupt you mill top 5 or excavate the top 5 cards and then you can choose one to banish and then set the rest back so you know what your opponent is going to draw and it has to be in that same order so you know what your opponent is going to draw so you have inside firstly if you're going first and they do some sort of interruption that's obscure you can still look at the cards and then it gives you an idea of what they're playing so you can set up your board accordingly and two it's 2800 attack it's a beat stick so yeah I, I would prefer ogre over unicorn which is a million times more expensive and i mean it's a common you can get it very cheap and yeah people will even give it to you for free so i would prefer ogre over fenrir and they look like this plus any tuner just brings out one of your boss monsters immediately so there's a quite a lot of synergy uh, the rest of the deck functions the same. The one thing I will say is I have you kind of have to remove Caligo to kind of accommodate for everything else. So what I've done is I put Caligo at one, which is similar to a lot of other builds. But then I've added Sharon, right? So the reason why Sharon is here is because say this gets interrupted, right? Um, and when I play the deck, I hardly ever make Jet Warrior, and you kind of want it as a follow up in case your board gets broken. But that's the nice thing about this build is you're not making everything. So the whole idea of Synchron is you spam everything on one turn and you basically shock your opponent out of this existence with all the million negates that you have. Um, but with this build, you're not really doing that. What you're doing is just 
you almost it's almost like a control deck you just bring out one or two things at a time you have the bestials to sort of interrupt you have the kashtiras which are boss monsters in themselves and then maybe you bring out like a baron or chinging or crystal or something like that um and then you control the game that way um but yeah so usually if you want follow up you go sharon and then usually at this point you probably have a jet warrior in hand or graveyard you basically bring that out make jet warrior you bounce a card and then jet warrior has its own advantages so there's a lot of ways now where we can play um, that works around one of the big problems of Synchron is um, obviously once hit got hit with well, the casual ban we can't make heart rate anymore it's not convenient so we lose heart to dark ruler so you, even if we build up our entire board we get dark ruler we lose our entire board even if you get lava golems or uh, sphere mode uh, where we lose most of our board we kind of screwed at that point because our deck is all gas now we have ways to play around that where it's like okay you got rid of our board i'll just play next turn i'll just play the turn after that so i feel like this build sort of solves that problem for synchron and i think this is the direction we need to move in if we want to play competitively and actually top and win and then obviously i'm sticking to just um three slots for the hand trap segment uh because we have this putting in the work so this is mainly here because obviously tier limit um, and then obviously if your opponent decides to play banished up, I actually don't know why I should sat out one of these for I think I can remove the imperms and I'll put in artifact lanciers just in case our opponent decides to do Banishing so if we go against a flu player if we go into the runic players, uh, which is we're seeing a lot more of that right now so then you kind of want to side out the bells for that and then also we have chinging and this is an insight that I had in one of my local matches, I think two weeks ago, where um, obviously I didn't have a Baron at that time, I've got one now, so luckily I can still make Baron now, but I had Chinging and my opponent was playing Runic. Like my board did nothing because it was Kashtir Unix, uh, Runic, so like it didn't really help anything and what my stuff was getting banished. So I decided, you know what, let's actually help them, L let's allow them to banish, let them do it. And I brought a Chinging and it just punished them because they couldn't play around it because it just gave me more advantage because their whole deck revolves around the fact that they need to banish so we sort of egged it on so there are a lot of advantages of deck building around what your opponent wants to do so yeah but i did if you see for this build i took out um shen shen and i put in omega again you can choose which you want to play i still think shen shen is better in this format um, but you can side and then you know change it up according to your matchups But yeah, this is what the deck build is looking like so far. I don't think you can change anything for the build at the moment If you want to go a pure bestial and then play the rebellion and then play The branded beast and the branded retained I think or branded and high spirit I forget which one of the spells it is you can go in that direction or you can just go pure Kashtira but I think merging is the best alternative we have at the moment because this just helps us go it, there's three bodies on the field we now we all we need is just one tuner in hand to normal summon and we can make a boss monster where in the past we needed two card combo to make speeder still combo off and then we potentially get negated we get our board broken and then we struggle to play past at that point so yeah this is going in the this is sort of solves that problem but i think there's not much to say like i mean the deck is solved at the moment uh for like the more competitive build i will be playtesting this a little bit more and then i'll try and bring to you guys more insights what could be added what could be removed um but the one thing i will say is the caligo is kind of bothering me because i would like to have it at three because if for example you mill your Caligo to the grave and then one of our combos relies on you need to use Cupid Pitch to add Caligo to hand to use special summon to make a herald so if this is in the grave that's completely shallow so you need a like then you need a freestyle so and you don't really want to be thinking all that much in a match you want to have your set combos in mind if you do ever need to go into the combo lines and make speed and combo off if the bishops and stuff don't work so yeah, you don't want to have to sit there and now think how the hell do I freestyle this. You want to have your set combos and you want to be able to play confidently. Um, so yeah. But that's all I have to bring to you guys today. This is the deck list. I'm playing it at 42. Um, and I really hope you guys like it. If you guys did, please like, comment and subscribe. And also, always, I'll see you guys on Friday with the more casual fun stuff. And then Sunday again and I'll bring to you guys maybe replays on this. And I'll show you guys this in action. That's all from me today, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.